Hello, this is Bob McClellan. This screencast is the second in a series about Spreadsheet ML, part of the OpenXML document standard. If you've not seen part one of the series, you may want to view it at the link shown. Also, there are no code examples in this screencast, but I have many code examples in my posts on openxmldeveloper.org. Just look for Bob M. In this part, I'm going to show you how to work with formulas in a spreadsheet. So let's get started. Here I have an empty spreadsheet that I'm going to demonstrate formulas with. And I'm going to just quickly fill in some values here to use for formulas. And I'll put a couple formulas in here. I'll make this one A1 plus A3 plus A5 and make this one A2 plus A4 and save it. Now I'm going to examine this in Visual Studio. In order to do that I need to have, have it closed in Excel otherwise it won't load it there. The tool I am using is the OpenXML package editor power tool for Visual Studio 2010 and it is very useful. I strongly recommend it. So I'm just going to drop this over here and now I can see all the parts here and I'm going to start by looking at the sheet and I can format this using a uh, control E D holding down the control key and that formats it very nicely for me. And here I have my first formula. My formulas appear in the cell. Yeah, you can see the V element has the value and then the F has the formula and that is how they are specified. So there's my D1 and D2 is right there with the second formula I put in and its value. So I'm going to make a quick modification to add another formula just to show you how easy this is. I'm going to copy my D2 formula and put it down here in row 3 and make that D3. And then I'll just change this to be A2 plus A1. Save that. I open it up in Excel. And now I can see the formula right here is as I specified it for D3. However, the value is not correct because I didn't change the value. Now, I don't really want to have to calculate the value because Excel has a great calculation engine built into it. I don't really want to be doing calculations for all my formulas. So there's a little trick I can use. I go back over here and in the workbook part, I can come down and there's this calcul calc PR, which stands for is short for properties. It's the calc calculation properties. And I just have to put in here full calc on load equals one and save that. Then I open up my spreadsheet and there it has updated it on the load. Now since it's changed I'm going to save it. Close this because it's going to reload when I come back here. I reload it. And I see the calc properties has eliminated that full calc on load, just to show you that it does not stay around. It's a one-time deal. But it's very useful for that purpose. Now, the other part that comes into play in the spreadsheet involving formulas is the calculation chain. Or it comes into play in a way. I'll show you. The calculation chain, you can see, has references to D1, D2, and D3 in here because those are the cells that contain formulas. But it, as it turns out, you don't need to worry about the calculation chain. You don't need to do anything at all with it if you're modifying these formulas because if we look over in the spec here on the section about the calculation chain, we can see that the calculation chain described in this section is not required by the spreadsheet application and so on. You can read about that if you want to get the full story, but it says it's it's uh, not required that you keep it updated in any way. 
Moving on, I'm going to open this up again. And so far I've shown formulas in cells. There are a couple other places that you can put formulas. One place is as a conditional format. So I'm going to tell it here that I want a less than and here the less than value is a formula. So that formula can refer to just a number like less than zero if I want to see negative values or uh, it could be a, a cell formula or you know any other formula that you could legally put in there but I'm going to start with zero just to show this first so if I change this to minus six let's say then it shows that formatting but if I go down here of course the formatting is only on that first cell another place you can put a formula is in a validation if I go over to data I can go to data validation right here and let's say I want to allow only whole numbers between 1 and in this case I think I'll put in C1 as my maximum. So now if I try to type in say 23 it says can't do that. But I can go over here and put 30 in there and then I can put 23 in there for example. So I'm going to save this and we'll take a look at how those formulas are represented. Again, I have to close it in order for it to reload. I don't need to look at this calculation chain anymore. But let's look at the sheet and see what it's got in there now. So I can see down here I have conditional formatting with a reference to B1, which is the cell that I formatted. And it has a rule that uh, it's checking to see if the cell value is less than zero and that DXFID is then going to refer to a style. I'm not going to talk much about styles here but since it does apply I'm just going to point out where that's coming from. I can go down to the DXF's table right here and find the first DXF entry and it shows me that I've got a different color font and a different color fill and that's what's creating that highlighted red uh, cell format. So going back to the sheet, th that is the conditional formatting and then the data validation I'm using a whole number type that was my the first type that I chose from the drop-down and then I have again my reference to the cell a1 is the one that I formatted and then the formulas because it's uh, between values it has two formulas one for the minimum one for the maximum and that sets that whole validation so now I'm going to show that the reference here can be extended very easily by just adding to the list so I'm going to add it down to the rest of the column and save that. Then go back over to Excel. Now you can see unlike the cell formulas the conditional formatting has updated automatically on the load regardless. And now I can also go in here and put in say minus four and see that it's being applied to all these cells. Now over here Let's see if I put in 34, it tells me that it is too high. That's a bad number. So I can put in 20. Oh, no, I can't. Actually, what happens here, because that formula was uh, using a relative formula, it used C1, no dollar signs to make it an absolute value, it has automatically applied this validation to the entire column. So I can see that 12 works, 13 doesn't. So it's actually using the whole column as validation for the other column. The whole C column is the maximum for the A column values. 
So let's change that just so you can see how it changed. Although, what I think I'll do is change this one. I'm not going to save my changes here. I'll go back and change this to C1 also. And at the same time, I'll put this one in absolute so you can see the difference. OK, so now this one's now depending totally on this one value and so on. You can see it's only using C1 for every one of these. Whereas over here, we can see all of these that are showing up as below these maximums. But if I change that one, see now it's 6, 7, 8. Once it gets below, it changes its formatting. So you can see it works both, with both ways, whichever way you want it to for your situation. One final example, or one point I'm going to make here. Go back to the spreadsheet as it's changed. And one, I'm just going to look one more time at the calculation chain to show that these other formulas are totally ignored by the calculation chain. It only applies to cell formulas. There are other places where formulas can appear, uh, specifically defined names. And there's a part of the revision process that includes formulas and also pivot tables. But I'm going to leave those for other screencasts uh, since they deal more specifically with those areas rather than uh, the idea of how the formula works itself. And actually, the the defined names is really straightforward since it is really primarily used just to define a range of cells. So those formulas are very simple. That's all I'm going to cover in this screencast. Look for part three. I think uh, part three will probably be on pivot tables since that's a, another area that most people are very interested in with, with the spreadsheet demo. So stay tuned, so to speak.